Hello and welcome, I'm JD and today I want to go through some of the common fleet builds that are currently seen within Nebulous Fleet Command. These will be rough builds with some general tactics and strategies for each of the builds so that you can get a bit of an understanding of what can be played and how they can be played if you're new to fleet building or simply if you want to try a different style than what you've already been playing. Note I use the words common fleet as opposed to meta as I don't really believe that there is a meta in the game at the moment. There are definitely some fleets that are more seen than others. However, none of them are instant wins as there are quite a few different factors such as the number of players, decisions made, uh, generally what map is played and the mode. Each of these common fleets are centered around the 3000 point limit and the control game mode, which is the prevalent mode played within Nebulous Fleet Command. So that's what I'll be targeting this at. One thing that I do want to do going forward is to dive into each of these fleet types a little bit deeper and look through the modules that are important to each one and even have a bit of a build set up so that you can then take that and modify away. Noting that even in these common fleets that we will go through, there is still a huge amount of variance due to personal preference and style of play. So you can take each of these and modify them any way that you want to suit your play style and obviously have fun with it. So let's start with the battleship builds. There are three main builds for a battleship, that being the 450mm gun battleship, the rail battleship, and then the beam battleship. Now the gun and the rail battleship are largely similar, both in the fact that it centers around one battleship with at least one to two scouts. Uh, these are an absolute minimum. Uh, you need to take at least one. However, the current gameplay seems to see people taking at least two. The Rail Battleship is more of a fire support slash overwatch uh, fleet. If you want to play long range uh, using scouts and your team members to direct where you fire, then this is the fleet for you. In using the Rail Battleship, you're looking to position it so that you have clear fields of fire so that you can support your team with large rates of fire as they move onto control points, taking out the key priority targets on the enemy fleet. So these can be things such as beam destroyers, enemy scouts, or simply putting the fear into other battleships and heavy cruisers and knocking out their key components, allowing the rest of your team's fleets to move and capture the objectives. The gun battleship is more of that mid to long range support. It does have the ability to fire out to 11 kilometers, at which you probably want to be sitting somewhere around that seven, seven and eight a thousand meters, largely because a beam destroyer or a beam fleet has that five to 6,000 meter range. And being caught uh, by beams is probably the worst thing for any battleship other than torpedoes. So using the gun battleship, you do want to have more survivability in terms of um, damage control and damage control teams, as well as restores. The gun battleship also excels at the ability to then move closer in supporting other fleets. So if you have uh, a beam destroyer fleet, light cruisers, other heavy cruisers, if they're going ahead of your gun battleship, then you have the ability to continually put fire onto enemy targets without the ability of the other team to jump and attack your battleship at close range. This is where the scouts come in for both gun and rail battleships. They perform key roles. First is that both the gun and the rail battleship require locks to be accurate with their fire. Without so, the spread on both the weapons can see you missing quite a few shots, although the rail guns will have a better time at shooting smaller fast moving ships such as corvettes than the guns will, but a lock will absolutely make that deadly. You want to use your scouts to provide locks for your ship so that you can be independent from other fleets and you have the ability to engage your own targets when required. You can also use the locks from supporting fleets, however if they get knocked out in the melee, or if you are unable to see them, or you simply they're out of doing their own thing and you want to go your own way, you want to have your own locks. The other thing here too is that the scouts will be able to provide you vision. And vision for a battleship is crucial. Small fleets of corvettes with torpedoes or missiles um, or even any type of beam weaponry will be the downfall of a battleship uh, and very quickly. You want to be able to spot those by having two scout corvettes which have the ability to independently provide vision and a lock will allow you to have redundancy, a vessel to move around in the late game to cap points, but also to act as early warning around your battleship, being able to spot ship further out than you would normally with your integrated radar. That's why we're seeing generally two being run at the moment, as one can generally be caught out. The beam battleship is a little bit different. It is probably the hardest fleet type to play in the game. Generally, players are still taking a beam battleship and a corvette scout. Scout is generally running just a little bit ahead of the beam battleship. 
providing vision of where the enemy is so that the beam ship can move into place. Being a slow moving battleship, you need to use effective cover and positioning as well as vision and scouting in order to get into beam range of the enemy. If you fail to do this, you will get caught out by other weapons that can take out the battleship. Otherwise, the enemy fleet may just kite you around the battlefield, uh, in which case generally faster ships will be able to perform this leaving this ship to be fairly useless. One of the downsides of a beam battleship is that each beam turret requires a significant amount of power, which means you have less power for things such as radars. It also means you do have less power for things such as Aurora laser point defense, and therefore the survivability of the battleship goes down. If you also suffer damage internally, you need to have enough damage control teams to bring the turret back online, as well as the power to support it. So these are all challenges pre presented to the beam battleship. It is a fun ship to play, don't get me wrong, uh, but probably something you want to avoid for newer players. Uh, unless you want to just have a little bit of fun with it, it does teach you a few things such as positioning and vision, uh, but potentially steer away for your first time around. Onto the heavy cruisers. Heavy cruisers are in a bit of a weird spot at the moment. They're generally not powerful to be run in teams of two, which you may see in Task Force Oak being one of the starter fleets. They can be, however, at 1500 points per ship, you either have sort of two underpowered ships or you have one overpowered and one underpowered ship, which can work. However, it is a bit harder to play. They are quite slow and therefore they can be kited out by other ships or if you are caught out of position, either due to scouting, which you won't really have the ability to do other than the two vessels, as you won't really be able to take a scout ship without further degrading what's on your main two ships. You'll then be forced to travel across the map to where the battle has already finished and moved on. However, there is a psychological thing to seeing a lot of heavy cruisers on the field as they are still fairly formidable to deal with. But currently, most of the heavy cruiser builds that I've seen center around a one heavy cruiser and that heavy cruiser usually has guns on it. However, it can also have rails and then you have supporting ships. So this could include things such as two beam destroyers, which make use of the cover of the heavy cruiser to get into position. It generally has the ability to be supported by a single light cruiser uh, and a frigate, or as I currently have a heavy cruiser, a light cruiser, and two scouts. You could also then have a mixture of other different ship hulls and types in there, performing different functions, ultimately supporting that heavy cruiser as your survivable uh, gun platform, able to barge its way onto a control point, and then using another ship hull to mitigate its weaknesses, such as being slow, the fact that it needs uh, a little bit more point defense, as well as providing vision and locks to the guns for the heavy cruiser, as we've already discussed within the battleships. Light cruisers are in a fairly good spot. They have a degree of utility and a few different builds possible to you. For newer players, they are quite a good hull to start with. They have a mix of different hull mounts for different options, as well as the ability to be a little bit survivable uh, from even a bit of gunfire and they can take a few missiles before they really start to get too damaged. So this is probably a good place for new players to start. The gun light cruiser, so generally two to three light cruisers uh, which have uh, four to five guns on each of them. Sometimes you'll see three light cruisers having four guns each or you may see uh, two gun light cruisers uh, each having five guns and then supported by frigates and corvettes. Uh, basically, the main aim of this build is for you to sit at mid-range, firing your 250 millimeters at anything that is a light cruiser and below. So using AP to target other light cruisers and then using HE on things such as frigates and also using RPF on things such as corvettes to initially disable and then finishing off with HE. You can also mount missiles, uh, EWAR and a whole bunch of different things onto these ships, uh, providing a vast degree of utility to act as their own strike force capture points they can also be used to escort larger ships such as the heavy cruisers and the battleships as the 250 millimeters um, are absolutely excellent against uh, corvette swarms using their rpf to disable in large numbers by changing fire every few seconds and they also have the ability to take out things such as destroyers so if they can get the jump with appropriate vision uh, they can take out a beam fleet fairly okay I think with light cruisers at the moment, you basically want to use this type of build uh, as an escort or as a supporting force to something else. It just provides the ability to run in front of other ships and really add the massive point defense to the punching power of a heavy cruiser or a battleship, particularly a gun battleship. If you're a bit more of a player who wants to sit back and provide support, then a missile light cruiser fleet is indeed up your alley. Uh, this can range again anywhere between two to three light cruisers generally using roll-off missile launches as they don't have a compounding penalty such as the VLS or the vertical launch systems. 
whilst then also maximizing the bulk magazines within a light cruiser to fit as many missiles as possible within their hulls. The different missiles uh, is totally up to the player. You can use Hurricanes, Thunderheads. Another one is the Gales because they are fairly cheap, which works well provided the large magazine space of multiple bulk magazines within a light cruiser. You can get a fair amount of Gales stacked within a light cruiser and you have enough power to support the various illuminators required for that missile type. If you're good at waypointing missiles, you can sit anywhere on the battlefield and provide fire in support of other fleets particularly things such as destroyers. As other ships take evasive maneuvers, you can then have your missiles coming in from the odd angle where they are trying to dodge away from the primary missiles being fired at that target. With enough missiles within each of the light cruisers, if you miss the first volley, you can generally uh, continue to provide fire for significant amounts of time, easily wearing out the number of chaff on a ship, or eventually simply through the sheer amount of fire, you can penetrate the point defense turrets on a ship, being able to slowly degrade the enemy ship missile by missile. Uh, even if you're only getting, you know, two or three out of 40, eventually you'll be able to take out an enemy ship. Missile corvettes can use a few different tactics, such as an alpha strike on top of a control point. If you're on the other side of the map and you know that the enemy is going for a specific point, as is usually the case deploying into a game, then you can immediately waypoint missiles to that, taking out unprepared fleets. Alternatively, you can hang back to the mid game, holding your missiles until the initial engagement has commenced. And then as ships are already degraded and preoccupied, adding a weight of missiles to that engagement to try and tip it into your favor. People who really want to get close to the enemy, but still enjoy the light cruiser, then a torpedo light cruisers are for you. Basically, like the missile light cruiser, this is the same type of build, roughly two light cruisers stacked with bulk magazines, but instead of using MLS 2 size roll-offs, you're using MLS size 3s, and you're loading as many torpedoes as you possibly can. And as you deploy into the game, you are going to rush the enemy so that you can get into torpedo range of about 3,100 meters and then loose missiles at close range into the nearest and dearest ships of the enemy. Targets can effectively be anything, but slow turning, slow moving targets such as heavy cruisers and battleships are optimal, but if you can take out a light cruiser or two, you won't be too sad. This fleet has worked for many a people. Uh, you can be caught out of position if detected early, so you wanna be using cover as much as possible. Hide your signature size, hide yourself from visual where no one can see exactly what type of roll-off launcher that you have. And then the minute you get lined up is to go full speed at the enemy until such time you have exhausted all your torpedoes or you've destroyed the target. Basically here, you wanna be maximizing your engines to have the fastest acceleration and fastest speed you can have without damaging or burning those engines out. Other than that, there's not too many other tactics or strategies for this fleet. Destroyers again are quite versatile. You've got the beam destroyer, which is probably the main thing that the destroyers are known for. Three beam destroyers centered around a corvette or a support ship. It could be a frigate. Basically, this is Task Force Ash. Uh, it is already fairly optimized, although it can be slightly improved. One of the benefits of this fleet is that you can take all types of secondary weapons. You can take missiles in the VLS system for long range fire support or even to finish targets after the beams have neutralized a bit of point defense. You can use 250 millimeter guns for HE to target things such as corvettes and frigates, or you can use torpedoes as a bit of a ship killer after you've got a few beam strikes and have closed within range. The beam DD fleet or the beam destroyer fleet has a simple tactic is to be undetected and the minute it is able to navigate into a position where it is able to engage its beams, its beams are ready to fire. So positioning on the beam destroyer fleet is absolutely crucial. They get caught out of position as the enemy is able to outscout you, then you'll quickly become a target. And with the beams being at the front of the fleet, like all types of the destroyer special weapons, those beams can be immediately destroyed, negating the major capability. So you can either rush at the very beginning, or as I've seen within the 1v1 tournament, or even in some of the later matches, holding the beam destroyer fleet until the enemy has been scouted and engaged, and then using that knowledge to then position the beam destroyer fleet for the final killing blow. The rail destroyer fleet is the complete opposite of the beam destroyer fleet and is more akin to the rail battleship. Generally, we're seeing three rail destroyers, some scouts, or even a frigate to provide the locks as we would do for the rail battleship. 
we aren't seeing this fleet as often at the time of recording uh, as we used to, largely due to people understanding how to counter it and due to the fact that the rail destroyers can be a little bit vulnerable. They don't have the survivability of something such as a rail battleship. If you're getting counter rail fire or if you are taking gun damage from 250 millimeters or 450 millimeters, you can quickly see that your rail fleet is put into disarray as it also suffers from the inability to really traverse quickly. So changing targets is not as quick as something such as a rail battleship, which has the ability for its turrets to depress, elevate and rotate to fire whereas the full rail destroyer needs to move in order to change targets quickly. So that's a bit of a downside for the rail destroyers. Occasionally you will see someone bring a huge amount of rail destroyers in a rail array format, you know, eight or nine rail destroyers, uh, which are basically stripped down with nothing else, using the weight of fire to suppress and destroy targets. However, again, taking any sort of damage means that they have low survivability, destroying their main weapon and the inability to really restore any damage components as damage control has largely been stripped out for the maximization of other hulls and other railguns. Finally, uh, missile destroyers are a thing. I've seen people use uh, roll-offs. I've also seen people use uh, vertical launch systems. I've also seen a mix of both. It depends on what you want to do here. Two or three missile destroyers, again, loaded with uh, either Thunderheads or Hurricanes is generally the go-to. They rely on scouting from other people, hanging back around previously controlled control points, or loitering in between in the safe space provided by other ships that have already moved through and cleared an area. Missile destroyers do have one thing that they are really good at. You can put a pinard mount on the front instead of a beam or a rail, and that allows for the pinard to always be facing the engagement area, looking for e-link tracks that may appear. Even though you, you may not have the longest search radar, you may be able to pick up e-link. So that's one thing that we have seen both in the 1v1 tournament and some of the 4v4s. But ultimately, it depends up to you if this is the type of fleet that you want. It can be fun and interesting to play. I don't have a fleet built around this one yet, but you could also use a one of the secondary weapons. So you could add maybe a 250 millimeter gun. Even one of them will be able to provide a little bit more support and de defense against things such as corvettes and other missile typed weapons. Frigate fleets are generally not seen. The hull is largely regulated to a support as it has more versatile hard points than a corvette, but notably has more power that is able to be put onto the ship as you can take an extra micro reactor in one of the module slots. There are a few fleet builds that you can build. You can run a gun frigate swarm. This is generally six to eight frigate platforms, each with 120 millimeter guns maximizing guns on some of the platforms and then having a few that provide the support capabilities such as the increased radar, point defense, electronic warfare, and maybe even missiles. This type of fleet can do well against something such as a corvette swarm or it can eventually put out enough fire to take down a light cruiser or even things such as a beam destroyer but ultimately it does suffer from the fact that most targets above the destroyer, so light cruisers, heavy cruisers, and battleships, have enough armor and damage control to fix most of their main areas, allowing them to then provide counter fire back onto those frigates. With heavier weaponry, the frigates will eventually succumb either due to loss of components, loss of power, or simply being destroyed that will negate their usefulness. So as a fleet type, it's not really seen and it's not really played too much at the moment. Missile frigates used to be seen a lot until the compounding cost of the VLS was introduced, at which point it became too expensive to run a missile frigate fleet. You could try doing such, something such as using roll-offs. I don't think I've seen anyone using that. Uh, so missile frigates at the moment, they're more of a footnote into the game, but maybe they'll make it come back one day. Corvettes are a very fast-moving hull platform. They have a low radar signature. They can get nice and close before you know what's going on if you don't have the proper scouting and vision within an area. And this makes them deadly for a few different things. First is the missile corvette fleet. The aim here is to rapidly close with the enemy and generally through aggression, take out high value targets such as battleships, heavy cruisers, and even the odd light cruiser with massed missile fire. The missile corvettes can use a mix of different types of missiles. You can use gales with illuminators. You can use hurricanes and thunderheads, or you can have a couple of each for different scenarios. 
For this build, you'll generally see most Corvettes having at least one VLS and then supporting modules will also be heavy in electronic warfare in order to mask its approach. And it'll also generally have a spyglass or something that is able to detect where the enemy is in order to direct where that fleet goes. The complexity for the player who is playing this is simply the fact that there are a number of different hulls. And whilst you can put them all in a formation at the very beginning of the game, as you start to take a significant amounts of damage, you then have to remember where all your radars are, where all your point defense is, and particularly manage a lot of the power as you only have one reactor. You can't take any more. So if you've gone over the power limit and you're requiring to turn things on and off to perform certain actions, then you really need to be paying attention of where all those ships are, how to find them, and turning things on and off as required to maintain the power to always be continually putting out missiles. For people coming up against these types of fleets, Providing vision through generally a spyglass radar is probably the best. You'll see them generally around the five kilometer mark is the best thing that you could potentially do, as well as having some 250 millimeter radio proximity fuse type ammunition, which you should be able to scatter throughout the fleet, knocking out some of the key components. Once you start to degrade enough of the fleet, the effectiveness of the fleet becomes degraded and less threatening. Likewise, if you're also able to have the countermeasures for each of the different missiles, either chaff for thunderheads and gales, integrated point defense for any or all of your ships, or an interruption jammer for any hurricanes that are fired. One thing on the missile corvette, as well as all the other different types of corvette fleets, is that towards the mid-game, once you've used all your missiles, or the majority of your missiles, you can start to split up the fleet uh, for any that are still functioning, and then be able to move around the map really quickly, capturing different points therefore making it a really hard for your enemy to have to continually move back or leave a ship in order to retain a point, meaning that they can't go and press other control points, allowing you to eventually win on points if you've been able to hold a certain lead or with, be within a certain margin throughout the game, even if your enemy is ahead. Piggybacking off the Missile Corvette, the Missile Corvette slash Torpedo Light Cruiser had a bit of an amalgamation, and then you get the Torpedo Corvettes. It runs on a similar principle of the Corvette Swarm by maximizing the amount of hulls which are able to take MLS-3 launches and a bulk magazine or reinforced magazine allowing you to take six to eight torpedoes per Corvette. And then mixing that with the tactics that you would have seen with the light cruiser torpedo fleet which you rush your opponent, staying undetected and trying to get as close as possible before launching as many mace torpedoes as possible. With mace torpedoes being command guided, you're not gonna be able to dodge them using chaff, You'll also not be able to use the interruption jammer as the launching ship will be so close that the launching ship will be able to overpower that hurricane jammer. Your torpedoes will remain on target. And generally the point defense of that ship will not be able to overcome with the sheer amount of health each torpedo has and in the numbers required to completely destroy it. So you're bound to get a couple, if not a lot of torpedoes hitting a battleship, which is your primary target, or anything else that they are able to get their hands on. The downside for the Torpedo Corvette is that it has to get so close that if you're able to counter it, but when it's, say, 4,000 meters out, noting that it has a launch range of 3,100, you should be able to negate the effectiveness of that tactic. If you're able to have the vision, you'll spot those Corvettes, you'll see what they have, and you'll be able to position your fleets, and then through the use of either missiles, guns, preferably 250 millimeter radio proximity fuses, you'll be able to degrade that effectiveness of that swarm and take that threat out. If they get a few ships towards you, then integrated point defense on your ship should have a more comfortable time dealing with those torpedoes. You may still take one. Um, however, you should be able to destroy the rest of the ships before they are able to reload and then engage again. A fun fleet to play. It is effectively a one trick pony. You don't have the ability to waypoint or do anything else that you do with a missile corvette swarm and you are significantly weaker than a light cruiser torpedo fleet. However, you are significantly faster. Again, vision is very important. So both for the torpedo corvette player as well as for the battleship player who I will direct this at because you are the prime target. Whether you be a rail battleship, a gun battleship or a beam battleship, you are the target. Having vision for both players will allow them allow the torpedo corvette player to detect who their target is. And for the battleship player, you're going to be able to provide early warning so that you may and so that you're able to then respond effectively to either reposition your battleship or to bring other ships over to support it. If you have a light cruiser, if you have a light cruiser, that is probably your best one. 
a gun like cruiser probably your best otherwise a huge otherwise large amounts of missiles may be the one to take out a torpedo corvette the final fleet that we'll go through is the gun corvette swarm like the previous two you're maximizing hulls but you're generally taking either a mix of 120 millimeter or 10 or 250 millimeter guns and you're simply aiming to target anything that is destroyer and below this type of fleet isn't really used too often again like the gun frigate fleet they are quite squishy so after a few rounds from the enemy fleet your corvettes will start to take significant damage and be degraded they are great at hunting enemy scouts they are great at hunting destroyer fleets as they have a high degree of maneuverability so you're able to get their jump if you've got the vision even if you lose one to a beam or a rail if you're able to split up your fleet you're going to have a much easier time uh, moving in and around the enemy ships where they are only going to be able to really target one or two others so it, it can be fun um, but it's generally not seen for people encountering this type of fleet like all the other corvette fleets 250 millimeter rpf is your friend and you will be able to outrange them i believe the 120 millimeters has a 6000 meter range 250 millimeters will have an 8000 meter range again if you're able to if you're able to have the vision you will see them and you will be able to start engaging nice and early uh, even if they have a, a few 250 millimeter pieces themselves uh, you'll have the survivability in the terms of your armor to defend against it so with all that said these are the common fleets i'm seeing within nebulous fleet command at the moment however it is by far not exhaustive players are able to have a number of subtypes and variants within all these different types of fleets and even completely different fleets that haven't been presented here as the game does allow you to go really deep and players prioritize different effects such as survivability electronic warfare missiles or guns over other players based on their play style and their experience like i said at the beginning i'd like to go through these in a little bit more detail being able to break down and show what are the key components for each of the different types of fleets the different hulls and sort of give a rough approximation of what you may be able to then take away and access through the steam workshop so that you can then use as a basis to build upon and then future refine for your own play style and enjoyment so i hope you enjoy the video i hope you've learned something and have a great day